Hello there. I'm starting a new series uh, and uh, it is called uh, Find the Best Move. So the idea is uh, to just take a random position uh, from the game, from uh, say move 20, and then uh, try to uh, find uh, the best move, the best continuation uh, for usually the, the winning side. So I will uh, start for this uh, purpose. Uh, I, I took this uh, Hastings uh, tournament, famous tournament for uh, from 1895, uh, and I will go through uh, through games, and you will see in in which way. So it's very similar, like uh, Dan Heisman's 20 minutes exercise, if if you know, if you're familiar with this exercise. So the idea is uh, go to move 20 and uh, stop, analyze position, and try to find the best move, and then later on try to compare the your move with the engine move and uh, what the actual master played. Okay, so uh, like I said, we are. Uh, I, I just um, cloned one study from Leeches. Uh, it's uh, all the games from this Hastings uh, 1895 tournament. Uh, I like this um, older masters because uh, they usually have uh, straightforward ideas. They play the attacking chess. It's a much less theory, uh, much less uh, my hard maneuvering like in Soviet chess. So um, this is why I chose this tournament. But of course, this works for any any tournament. You can you can choose the, just the latest candidate tournament. It doesn't matter really. Okay, so let's um, let's go to the game. Uh, first of all, I will uh, flip the board. I, I have turned off the engine, and also you can see that I I have uh, turned off the. Uh, moves so I, I i don't want to see the move and i'm doing this real time so i don't know what the best move is uh, i saw that the black won so i will just play as a black side i want to play as winning side because i assume this is the side which is better and which which works uh, which which will play better moves so let's go to the move uh, 20 i will just now uh, with my arrow i will just shift to to move 20. Okay, this is uh, this is the position. Uh, if this was some simple uh, recapture, I would just play it two or three moves uh, later on. Okay, so now it's uh, black. Uh, sorry, no, it's white to move. Okay, I want to have black. So uh, it's a black a black turn to move. So let's uh, try to think the uh, think about this position as we would ideally do in the tournament uh, in the tournament game if, if this was our game and we were playing uh, as black. So uh, let's first, uh, uh, like I, I said several times and I make I even made uh, several videos about it, you, you first you need to uh, check your opponent's plans and your opponent's uh, possibilities, resources and so on and then you, you should uh, think about uh, your own. And also uh, the second thing is that uh, you want to give a, a tactics priority or stra strategical considerations. So tactics is always more important than strategy because if there is a tactical shot on the game, then uh, the tactical shot either wins or loses the game on the spot. So first you need to be aware of the tactics. And then if uh, there are no tactics, if all tactics are eliminated, then you think about strategy, about your worst place piece, about your... Uh, um, pawn breaks and uh, so on. Okay, so let's let's start. Let, let's try to do this systematically. So first uh, we will count the material because uh, we are just uh, uh, put in this position. If you are playing, uh, if this was your game, of course you will know the material uh, in your head already. But let's just quickly count the material so I can see everything is equal. Yeah. Okay. So the material is equal. Okay. So we, we are not playing for. We are not forcing exchanges or, or something like this. <laughs> Yeah, this is not just a technical win. This is the game before, between Blackburn and Janowski, as you see. Okay, so let's try to think for the other side. Uh, the first, uh, the first step in thinking process is the null, so-called null move, null move. So if it was a white turn to move, what would be his best move? So this is the first thing you need you need to know about the position. So let's uh, let's think for white. So if we're, when we are uh, finding the best moves uh, for, for either side, we first start with the forcing moves. So does white have any checks in this position? So now, uh, now I'm, I'm looking for any checks. No, I don't see any checks. So, okay, first thing, checks. 
Second thing, does white have any captures in this position? So I, I see two captures, okay. So these are the two. And um, let me just turn off the internet while I'm doing this because it will be a little bit faster than I will have to turn it off when I turn the engine. Uh, by the way, I'm not using my, my video because uh, my computer is too slow when I turn on the engine and the video, it doesn't work simultaneously. Okay, so these two captures, uh, what about them? Does either of these captures work? Mm, no, I don't think they do. Okay. Does he have any other captures? Yes, he has this capture. Okay, now well, this is already worth calculating because he can give a, he can sacrifice a piece for two pawns. And if he has initiative, then it's, uh, it's something worthwhile considering. So does he have initiative if he does this, if he, for example, oh no, my, my, my bishop is guarding now, now I saw this. So yeah, so it, it definitely doesn't work because yeah, my bishop is guarding the pawn. So it's not just two pawns, it's just giving up the piece. Okay, so the captures doesn't work. Threats, this, so the third thing, so ca checks, captures and threats. So does white have any threats? Okay, let's see. Can he attack my queen? This is the first, the first question. So I don't see how. There is this unpleasant situation. So when you're looking at threats, you're looking first of all at your queen. Is your queen in danger? Can he endanger your queen? And now you see that his rook and his queen uh, are aligned. Let's say this is me. So my queen and his rook are aligned. So this tells me that uh, this is possible problem in my position. So I'll just store this information in my head for now. Okay, can he can he uh, attack my queen? Yeah, he can. He can play this move. So c5 is a threat. Okay, if he plays c5, he will create weakness on on the d4 square. So I don't think this threat really works because I can just retreat my queen somewhere. I don't want to keep it on the dark squares. So I guess I will just retreat it like, like here or somewhere. Yeah. And then he doesn't have, I don't see a good continuation. Maybe there is, but I don't see one. And he has this weakness. This backward pawn will be weak. And uh, when you're looking at the backward pawn, you're looking at, at the, uh, the, the square in front of the pawn. So you're looking if the pawn can, can advance. And uh, I don't see how because uh, I got a d5 covered very well. Okay, so I don't think this is a threat which, which should uh, concern me. Okay, what am I about my other pieces? So when I'm looking at my other pieces, I'm looking first of all for undefended pieces. So uh, there is and pawns. So uh, this guy is undefended, this guy is undefended, this guy is undefended. I think this is all. Yeah. So can he can he attack some of my weaknesses? So this this would this would be a threat. And also looking at his last move. So uh, you can see the last move was here. Maybe he wants to come here and make a double threat on my on both of my uh, both of my uh, undefended pieces. Okay, so I need to keep keep this in mind. How how to answer this threat? Maybe this is the most important question in this position. Okay, so you're gonna see what we are on the step one. We are just looking at the opponent's null move, the threats, and we also we found something. So this is this is the threat. Okay, let's say that it's his move and he plays uh, queen to h4. I think this threat can easily be met with just with king h7. And I don't see any problems. He, he can try to pile up, for example, put the king here and then put the rook here, trying to pile up on this weakness, but I can just put the rook. I think I can defend this weakness. Or even I can... Maybe if I see that he, he, he does this plan, I can maybe just push h5 because it's it's covered twice so i don't see the problem so if he does here here let's say he has this plan i can just push it looks it looks okay so the important thing is uh, like Dan heisman says not to play hope chess so the important thing is to know 
how, how to meet your opponent's threat. So you're not just hoping that uh, somehow you will, uh, you will you will deal with the threat once it's on the board. You have to anticipate your opponent's threat and then uh, uh, try to make uh, moves which will uh, neutralize his threats. Okay, so I think this is not something something to to be afraid of. Let's see other undefended pieces. He says these are undefended pieces. Can he challenge this B7 pawn in some manner which will be dangerous? Mm, it's on the light square, so maybe he could try to, to harass it with the bishop, but I don't see how because e4 is covered, so yeah, this this doesn't work. Okay, what next? So these are his his threats. I, I see that I, I can meet this threat with, G, with just king to g7. And let's 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 just calculate this a little bit more. If he plays queen h4, I play king g7. Does he have any checks or captures here? Mm, no, this knight is uh, you know three three squares on the diagonal, so it's harmless. Yeah, I, I don't see, I'm now just trying to look at some continuations, but I don't see it. I'm looking at checks, I'm looking at captures, I'm looking at possible threats, which are created by the move uh, queen to h4, and I don't see any. So, okay. Now it's our turn. So uh, let's think what is, what is our best move. And uh, again, we are starting with uh, checks, captures, and threats. So first tactics, then strategy. So tactics, tactical move would be, uh, so the check, first checks. So do, do we have some checks? I don't see them, okay. Captures, what captures are on the board? You have to, to look at our captures. It doesn't matter if they look unlogical because sometimes unlogical capture uh, can can give you ideas for some, some kind of sacrifice. So, okay, this obviously doesn't work. I mean, he has discovered and this is queen for a pawn. Uh, what about this this one? Okay, he can capture with the knight. And uh, do I have any? No, I don't have any continuation. Okay, so capture doesn't work. So threats. Can I attack his queen? I can by with my knight, but uh, I don't think this works because he 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 has this covered. Does he have undefended pieces or pawns? So let's see in his camp. Uh, these two guys are undefended. This guy is undefended. Yeah, I think this is it. Okay, so the move which comes to mind is uh, Queen B4 just hitting two undefended pieces, but it's it, it can easily be defended just by playing B3, and everything is defended. Another move. So when when you when you see uh, undefended pieces, you, you are looking at how how to how to double attack. So how how to attack the undefended piece and uh, simultaneously attack something else. So I'm looking also at uh, queen to a6, which simultaneously attacks two undefended pawns. Oh, sorry, this one is un. Uh, this is my board vision. I mean, this one is not undefended. So only the these two. Okay. So yeah, uh, this this is something. This is the problem I'm having with uh, with the board vision. And if you're a lower rated player, probably you have it also. So if if you were screaming before when I said this was undefended pieces, <laughs> you can you can accept my apologies. But uh, this is just the state of my chess at the moment. Okay, so these two are undefended. I hope. So can I simultaneously attack these two, or can I attack these two with uh, some? other attack as well. So uh, still I'm looking at uh, queen b4 attacking the pawn, but it's very easily met with just b3. Uh, queen a6 attacking this pawn. Again, he can just defend by, by playing a3. I don't see a real threat because yeah, I'm not threatening anything else. I see that this knight is uh, very important because it, uh, it guards these two pawns. Which are both attacked or, or can be double attacked very easily, so maybe I have to think how to dislodge his his knight. Okay, this is a lot now a little bit far fetched. Okay, so do I have any other threat? I don't think so. Okay, so we are done with uh, tactical 
tactical observations. So let's now think strategically. Uh, again, we are first looking at uh, my opponent's uh, strategical plans. So uh, first, you, you it's more important to be aware of your opponent's uh, position than or, of your own. Because if you miss some good plan from your opponent, you will you lose the game. And if you miss the good plan from you, you will just, well, the game goes on. Okay, so this, now I'm looking strategically. So this knight is a very strong piece. It's in the mighty half of the board. It uh, It's a good defender. It also attacks some, some key squares, you know, if I'm not careful. So... I might look how to how to dislodge this knight. Let's let's look at his other pieces. So the queen, his bishop is doing a good job here. He has this diagonal. He probably wants to maybe maybe he he's looking for this break. Takes takes takes. Yeah, he's breaking and my king is open. So this this break is a is a threat. Strategical threat. Okay, so I have to deal with 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 this. Okay, uh, sorry, with this threat. What else? His knight is also restricting my bishop. Okay, this bishop is restricting this knight. It's kind of boxing this knight away, taking away the forward squares for the knight. But it also prevents me from playing moves like uh, bishop c6, for example. Uh, which would be very nice because it will control e4, but I cannot play it because of this. If I try to challenge this knight, if I go with something like knight d7, it's a backward knight move, not, not ideal. But I have to do something about this knight, so if I go here, it becomes complicated because... Uh, he can still push. I mean, this this knight. I, I'm I'm thinking about trading this knight for this knight because this knight is undefended piece. It's not the greatest piece on the board, and this knight is a uh, his most most dangerous piece at the moment. So maybe by playing knight to d7, I can maybe threaten to to push the f pawn or just to, to trade the the knight off. So this is one move which comes to mind to just to to deal with positionally with his uh, very strong piece here. Okay, what other positional aspects I, I can see? Uh, I seem that my rooks are very passive. They are under uh, his rooks are, are developed. My rooks are not. So I might think about just uh, bringing the rook in the game. So just rook d8, or and, and this bishop is also problematic. I mean, this bishop is blocking uh, blocking my rooks. My, my rooks cannot be connected. Uh, this rook is blocked by by the existence of this bishop. So I have many, many, many problems, and also this uh, queen is aligned with the rook. So there are many problems in my position. I have the, uh, his knight in my half of the board. I have bishop who is obstructing my rooks. My rooks are not active, and uh, my queen is uh, here. You know, uh, x-rayed. So if you play something like d5, okay, he cannot play this at the moment, but sometimes he maybe he can, and then I don't like this. So I need to find a move which <laughs> addresses all. All, all these problems. So should I should I start by thinking about this knight, the problem of this knight, or should I just activate the piece? Maybe activate the piece, then put the queen here. If I if I play queen to b6, I'm also hitting this this guy. And uh, yeah. So I'm also hitting this guy and this guy. I mean, this one is well protected, but uh, his his queen will be kind of in indirect attack. But I don't think I I want to exchange queens. I'm not sure I want to do this. It's it's another thing to consider. But okay, it's a far fetched. I, I think the main problem is to get rid of this knight and. Uh, Yeah, so let's see what I'm just looking at another possible possible moves. I mean, this is a backward move. I don't like making backward moves. 
but I think it's necessary to harass this knight so I can develop my bishop and then I can activate my rook. I don't see what else can I do. Where can I put this bishop? Or I could just think about uh, giving this bishop for a knight. So just play bishop c6. If he takes, I take with the queen. I solve the problem of the pinned piece. I have activated the queen a little bit. I'm also controlling e4. And I do have knight against bishop. So the question is which piece is better here. The pawns are not fixed. So I'm, I'm not sure that... This is his bad bishop, so I'm not sure that I want to do this right now. Yeah. Okay, so we have to decide on the move now. It's uh, also yeah, it's been twenty minutes. So let's let's just uh, let's say let's say we are in the real game. We have to decide on the move, and uh, I think I think I would play. Bishop c6 here, give up the bishop uh, for this uh, strong knight, uh, improve my queen, solve the problem of, of the pin. Uh, put, uh, later on I can uh, activate my rooks and uh, if, if he doesn't do anything I can jump with my knight here. Okay, so the move is uh, bishop c6. Let's just play it. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, what uh, what did master play and uh, how how did how did the game went and uh, what is the relation of bishop c6 of my move? Okay. So uh, Blackburn play king g7. Okay. So he saw this threat and uh, he just uh, wanted to prevent this business at the start. So you can see that uh, yeah th this is. This is something we saw as also as a candidate move, but okay, not not really as a candidate move, but uh, I I saw this as a response to uh, queen to h4. But okay, Blackboard wanted to play uh, safe and he just uh, protected this uh, right away. And let me now look at the engine. What does the engine think in this position? So I will turn on the engine, and uh, let's see what what the engine says. Okay, so we have the engine now. So let's see which are the candidate moves. Knight to d7, okay, he wants to get rid of knight, we saw this move. Queen to d8, so maybe, uh, and king to, this, king to g7. Okay, so it looks like it was better not to give up the bishop, but to try to solve the, the problem of this knight. So this was one of the candidate moves, but not the candidate moves we, we chose to play. Queen to d8 is interesting move. Uh, I told you before that this threat could be met by queen to d8. So you can you can learn from this that uh, so two of the three candidate moves are uh, anticipating the threat. So this one is anticipating this threat, and this one is anticipating this threat. So you can see that uh, anticipation of the threats before they actually happen is a good thing. So I just want to see now it's plus 2.4. Okay, so white is much better. Let's see what happens if I play uh, bishop to c6. Okay, this this uh, this worsens the position. So plus two point four. If I play this move, it it should become it, it should be the same. Yeah, it should be the same, and this move is not so good. Why? Because he has a g5 threat. Which is not properly addressed. Okay. Yeah. Now I cannot take because. Yeah, he takes. Okay. So this this was this was a threat which I forgot to list. When I was li looking at the threats, I always uh, need to see if he can attack my. How can he attack my undefended piece? And this is obvious a threat which I which I missed. So you can see how important it is to be aware of all of all threats. So yeah, so uh, the refutation of this move is actually this threat. So what happens if I take here? He, he just takes back. Now I have to move my knight. Let's say I play knight to d7. I want to see what will happen. Yeah, then this guy is attacked. Yeah, this guy is attacked three times. So this is this is the problem. 
So the problem with, with this threat is that after this nice moves, then this guy is attacked one, two, three times and defended only twice. So yeah, this is this is the threat we missed. And this and this is what refutes the threat. I'm wondering what would happen if I would play king to g7 and if he now plays g5. Yeah, now this, this guy is protected, so I can just go on and play our knight to d7 and I, I, I'm not losing the pawn here. Okay, I can turn it off. Okay, so I hope this exercise was uh, was useful for you. You can see how how you should think in the in the real game. Of course, you don't. We we spent like twenty minutes on on this exercise. You don't have twenty minutes for each move on on the real uh, in the real game. Even over the board game, federated game, you have like ninety minutes for the whole game plus increment. So uh, this is not something you can do uh, for for every move, obviously. But uh, this is how you should train. And then uh, this process should become faster and faster as you train and also uh, as you increase your, your board vision and then uh, hopefully one day you will be able to, um, ma to make this process as quick so as you can uh, do it on each and every move in your uh, over the board, board long time controls game. Okay, thank you very much for watching the video. If you like the video, click the like button, uh, subscribe to my channel, share the comment below, and uh, I will see you with more chess, and uh, probably I will uh, do uh, episodes like this uh, uh, later on. I will see I will see the response. I will see how do you like the video, uh, is the video watched, uh, the, I will see at your comments. So if you like this kind of exercise, I will be happy to continue and uh, to go, for example, uh, over the whole whole tournament uh, in, in this in this fashion okay thanks for watching and cheers